Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is David Richter. Thanks for being on the show, David. Uh, thanks for having me. David has been a part of over 850 deals in his lifetime. He is currently writing Profit First for Real Estate Investing because he wants to change investors by giving them the power to wield money as a tool for their greater purpose through financial mastery. Uh, David, welcome to the show. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this, the Profit First model uh, for real estate investors and, uh, and what that looks like. Uh, but you know, share with us a little bit about who you are and maybe your, what you've done in real estate a little bit. And let's dive in. Sure. So I got started like a lot of people, Red Rich Dad, Poor Dad in college. Did my first deal then. It was just a, a hut house that I bought uh, back then. And that was about 10 years ago now and fixed it up and rented it out before I lived in it. Then I got married and then lived in that house, lived in it for two years, then lease optioned it after that. And the tenant paid early on time and then cashed me out. So that was a a nice introduction to real estate. And then I said, I need to do this more, you know, like I want to do this more, it it works. So I started working with a real estate investing company where, you know, it was a real estate investing company where they were doing about 80 or 90 deals a year at that point. And then when I when, as we grew that company, it went from 80 to 90 deals to about 300 deals in a year where we were doing fix and flip, turnkey, rentals, you know, lease options, everything in between. So that's where I really cut my teeth. And I got to sit in every single seat because we were a growing company. We had the different departments and the different seats. And I got to sit in a lot of those different seats, sit on the leadership team. And one of those seats was the finance seat. And that's where kind of sparked where I could see the real numbers behind what it takes to run a business like that. And that got me really interested in that kind of through the school of hard knocks there. And during that time too, I bought rentals and had a little portfolio and, you know, that was an awesome experience too. So that's kind of the background that I have in real estate. And through that, you know, we did over 800 deals while I was there and then I've done deals my own too. So that's where the 850 deals comes into play. Nice. Well, Maybe you can share a little bit about, you know, some things that stood out to you while you were uh, on that finance team that led you to do this, you know, for the profit first to write the profit first for real estate uh, investing. Sure. So I saw that even though we were doing about 25 or 30 deals a month, we had about 25 people too. So the overhead was really big. And, you know, before I had sat in different seats like marketing or sales or like property management or project management, basically getting those systems processes up and running. But then once we, uh, once I sat in the finance seat, I could see that what really happened with all that, you know, like what the product of all that work was. And so I saw like, hey, as much as going is coming in, you know, because we're doing so much volume, a lot of that's going out too. It's that classic make a million, but spend 1.1, you know, and it's like, that's where I could see it's not just about the volume and whatnot. It was really about the numbers and tracking that. And so that's what really sparked it for me. So then when I was in that seat, I made a big life change. We moved across the country. That was Northwest Indiana. Now I live in Maryland, closer to family. But I started working with another investor and we, and I sold my portfolio. So I, you know, like had a pretty good cushion. So I started working with another investor and then we went in there. I went in there and actually like helped him with his numbers first. Like that was the first thing we focused on. And it really helped him. And he looked me in the eye after we did that and got his numbers in order and said, Hey, you've changed my life. Because at that point, too, we were able to pull out like $400,000 like in, in actual cash from his properties because he was way under leveraged on his portfolio and he wanted cash in the bank you know, to do some things. And then that was around the time that the pandemic hit, too, in 2020. So he was sitting with a nice chunk of change, like prepared for anything, basically, at that point. So to me, that was like, OK, I need to help other people with this and really help, you know, like get the message out and I had read Profit First, the original book by Mike Michalowicz, and loved that line of thinking. So I became a Profit First professional and opened up my own company, Simple CFO Solutions, to help people implement that that mindset and to help them just have an advocate to be able to show them how to use your numbers and use that and get the numbers simply to understand them and take actions behind it too. So that's really what sparked my interest in the Profit First world and in 
getting the financial education to real estate investors. No, that is awesome. And I actually just started that book. I, I, I barely begun. Uh, however, I've heard many great things from other entrepreneurs uh, and other masterminds that I've been. I know lots of people who have read it and just claim it's changed so much about how they do business. Uh, and it's interesting to hear, you know, like you've become, one of the, what do they call it? Profit first, what? Uh, professional, yeah. Yeah, professional, uh, you know, and, and you're helping many other people. Uh, we'll, we'll get us started a little bit because I think, you know, oftentimes we get into real estate, right? To, we think of that passive income and growing wealth and, and the volume, like you were talking about, you know, we, think, we don't get into it to become a bookkeeper or, uh, you know, or, or to sit behind a desk for that matter. Most of the time we love being out. We're very active people, you know, are just trying to make things happen. Right. Uh, but man, we, we don't, we don't sit on that finance team long enough or, all, or maybe spend enough time there. Right. right. Uh, and and it, whether we, you know, to learn it or to even just improve our own books and, and really figure out where's our money going, you know, are we making right. anything? So help us get started a little bit with that mindset, maybe where people are making mistakes and how you're helping people uh, just to think through this profit first model. So the biggest thing that we help people with is behavior and the mindset in education, honestly. So we're really, we really go into these companies and help them change the behaviors that got, that has gotten a lot of people into bad positions or positions where they don't know where they are with their money and really help change that behavior. And then also just help them be educated on what to do with their finances or what to look for or how to actually use the numbers in order to turn their business around if it needs be or to have a better business. Because the whole profit first mindset it's, he boils it down to a formula, which is great because the traditional accounting mo method or the model, the formula is sales minus expenses equals profit, meaning you make a sale or you have rental income come in or you, you know, you flip that house and then you pay all your expenses, you know, marketing, you do, you know, everything out the door. And then if you have anything left over, then you might pay yourself something because you think you just have to reinvest everything. But then the profit first formula is sales minus profit equals expenses, meaning make sure you and your company are healthy first, get in the behavior of being a profitable company, and then your expenses are what's left over after that. And that's where a lot of people say, oh, we've got to grow and scale. and We've got to put everything in where you got to take a step back and say, where are we right now in our business? And are we in the position to grow and scale because we have the profit to do that? Or are we just throwing money at the wall and hoping to see what sticks and hopefully the growth solves my money problems. Like hopefully the revenue just covers everything. You know, hopefully the deals that I do, as long as money's there, you know, like we'll always be okay. And that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get in trouble right now. Today, we are in a hot market. But if you were, if it was uh, March of 2020, you had no idea what was coming for if it was going to be hot, if it was just going to tank suddenly. And no one knows that at any time. But as long as you're taking the proper steps to behave your way into profit, you'll always be prepared no matter what, because you'll be covered on that financial side. You'll make sure that your company's healthy, that you're healthy, that you have that mindset of we need to be profitable and then pay our expenses from there. So that's really the mindset behind mm -hmm. profit first and getting that into, into real estate investors to say, if you want to grow and scale, that's great. But there's a time and a place for that and making sure where are you right now? And some people we work with, we come in, they're profitable. It's like, yeah, let's do this. You know, like we can pour it into the marketing or into people or whatever. But a lot of people come to us and they say, my, my accountant said I had like a hundred thousand in profit and my bank account is like negative right now. Can you explain that? You know, and it's like they're paying taxes on something they don't even have there. So that's where we help people know, know their numbers know where their money's going. And honestly, the biggest thing we help people do is get that behavior of being profitable and the education of just where, what is going on here and how can I read this simply? It is a mindset, isn't it? Or education, like you say, that changing that behavior. Yeah. It is a behavior habit almost of how we look at those things, how we're brought up, how we're yeah. taught about, how we think we should think about business anyway. Yeah. And I mean, I'm the same way, you know, invest it back in, invest it back in, invest it back in. Uh, right. So help us, you know, what should that look like? You know, maybe you can give us an example, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a model that you've recently helped with, or maybe that's common, you know, to help us to start to think this way or to change our behavior. Sure. So there was a guy that came to us in 2019 at the end of 2019, and he was actually negative, like in the red 70,000 at the end of 2019. And so he came to us basically saying help, like I can't do this again. You know, like I need help on the financial side. So 
what we did on the practical steps of profit first, like to help you behave your way into profit is to set up bank accounts specifically for your benefit, for the owner's benefit. It's like the, it's like the envelope system. If you've heard of that, like for tracking your actual cash and you know, your, the personal side. So what we do is we implement these bank accounts where it's profit, owner's compensation, and the owner's pay. Those three bank accounts, I like to call the golden trio. I'm a total nerd. So if you follow me at all, I always like movie references. So it's like Harry Potter, or if it's like Star Wars, you've got the three heroes always going in there and making sure that the story is moving forward and that good wins. And you need that in your business too. You need accounts specifically set up to make sure you're winning in business, that you won't go out of business and that you're taken care of, that you can sleep at night. So we helped him implement the bank accounts, but get help him know like where he stood financially too. like dove into his books and said, here's what you're spending, you know, like, and here's what the true profit is. Now we need to get into the habit of you actually, he actually had room like to be able to, he had rentals and a fix and flip company. And he had room to be able to pay himself from his flips if he slowed down and focused on more profitable flips and not like just doing an insane amount of deals and like overworking himself. Because like in 2019, his wife started working with him, started having seizures. I mean, it was like he was stressed, overweight, you know, like he's never been like as stressed as he was before in 2019. And so we had to take that step back and say, here, these accounts are for your for you specifically. Here's what you can do right now. Like what percentages as that money, as your sales come in or your rent comes in, what you can put to those accounts, what you can start paying yourself. He had never paid himself from his flip, fix and flip company before. So we were like, we got to get a plan for paying yourself. What do you need? How many deals is that? What can we actually put into place? So we did. So we put all that in place. And then at the end of 2020, after going through the whole mindset shift, putting in the bank accounts and meeting with him on a weekly basis, what we were able to do, he told me at the end of 2020, he called me and said, hey, you know, like my accountant said I made X and it was like a very significant number. It was like over $200,000 that he had made net profit. And he said, you know, my accountant called me and he's like, that's awesome. And she said, I owe taxes. He's like, David, I haven't owed taxes for like years now because I've either been running negative or my, or I've had just so slight profit that my rentals were able to wipe out the profit, you know, like my depreciation. But he's like, this year I actually made money. He's like, and I owe this in taxes. It was only like 18,000 or something that he owed in taxes. And he got that call from his accountant and said, wait, give me one second. He opened up his bank accounts. And since he has two different entities, he had two different tax accounts he was saving into. And he looked at the balance and it was like 18,000 that he had saved by the end of 2020. And he said, you know, I've got the money there. I don't need to go into my operational expense account. I don't need to take from myself. I have the money already, sec you know, sectioned off there. Then he said, I, this last month, I took a vacation right from my profit account. Like that account is specifically for me, like to enjoy the benefits. And so this was the first time I took money out of my business, did not feel guilty about it, took it out and took a vacation with my family from that specific account. So it totally revolutionized his business. He's actually still with us today because we, you know, like now we're in the stage of actually pay, he's doing an account to pay down his portfolio because he wants like 25 free and clear rental properties. And we've got a plan right now. He'll be done paying all those off in six years. So we've got now we're sticking with him to like the other fun stuff he wants to do. And he's got, he wants to like fund a camp for the children, the uh, children's ministry with his, with his uh, church or whatnot too. So like he's, that's why he's paying down the debt on his property. So that's where I tell profit is a habit, but it also unlocks mm -hmm. your why behind what you do. So it also unlocks it, you know, without that profitability, you don't, you're not always going to reach your why because you might be too stressed about your money or you might have your wife work in the business. She might, you know, like that, the happy wife, happy life or your husband or your spouse, partner, business partner, whatever. If you're not profitable, you won't be in, you won't be able to achieve why you started your business. And that's probably one of the best examples giving actual steps of what we did inside of his business too, to help an investor completely transform from negative 70 to way blowing past that in 2020 and then actually getting you know, to the other benefits that you're supposed to be getting from your business too. 
Sounds like that may have saved his life as well. I mean, you said it's, uh, having seizures, overweight, very extremely stressed. Uh, we know all those things are, are very bad for your health. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, it's awesome to hear. And, and I like how you said, like, profit is a habit. Uh, it's interesting to think about it that way. Um, but I wanted to back up. You said, like, three accounts. You know, I want to, like, help the listeners, like, do something today, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, dare to change their behavior in some way. Uh, you said three accounts. You said profit owner's compensation, owner's pay. Uh, and uh, could you break that down a little bit? How do we know how much to put into those accounts or should we have more accounts than that? Or some people probably saying, why do I need so many accounts? Right. Sure. Uh, but how do we think through that? So there's actually five foundational accounts. Those three accounts I talked about are for the specific owner's benefit. Like those are to benefit you, the profit account, owner's compensation, and the owner's tax account. Then you've got your operational expense account, which you probably already have set up that is paying your bills right now. Then I would set up an income account. So all income goes into that account and it's just a holding bucket to be able to wait to say, okay, I have money in there to be able to allocate percentages on a percentage basis to the other accounts. So that income account is just a holding bucket to push through those other accounts. So that's not the owner's pay account. Right. The income bucket is just to say, here's the money that comes in. And we're going to use that just as a holding bucket to be able to push the profit to owner's comp, to the owner's tax, and to the operational expense account. Now, in real estate, the reason I'm writing profit first for real estate investing, because there is nuances in real estate. If you have a rental portfolio, or if you're doing fix and flips, or something where you're getting other people's money, or if you have a different type of expense, you might need like what I call a pass-through account to where if you get a if you get private, uh, private lenders funds. You know, like you might want to set up an OPM account, like other people's money. So that way it's totally separate from your operational expenses, from your benefit. So that way, if you're like funding a deal or whatnot and using that for the rehab portion, you have that. If you have like a, a rental portfolio, you might want like a pass through account, which includes like your PITI, you know, the principal interest taxes and insurance. So that way you're not, you're not mixing what's really your rental income or your expenses with what you know you're going to have to pay to someone else no matter what because you're contractually obligated to that, whether it's a private lender, a mortgage or whatnot. So there's the five foundational accounts, which is income, owner's pay, the profit, owner's tax, and exp the operational expense. Then in real estate, we can get more advanced. We could say there's an OPM to make sure you're separating out of other people's money, an account for that PITI or something like a pass-through account. So that way you can make sure you're separating that money out. But if I had to say to the listeners today, if you took one, I know that sounds like a lot of bank accounts, like what in the world? And I could go into the psychology behind it and I could go into, well, you need to make it the habit and could tell you the, the story again of the client from 2020 and 2019. But just open one account and call it profit and start transferring 1%. Just do that. Just make it a shift in a, in a habit that every time you close a property or rental income comes in, you just push 1% into that profit account. At least get in the habit and see how it works. It's almost like if you've read like the Automatic Millionaire before or other books like that or Robert Kiyosaki's books or The Richest Man in Babylon, they're always saying, pay yourself first or make it as automatic as possible. Well, in this case, set up that account and just push 1% of anything that comes into that income account into the profit account. Now, if you want to go the full shebang and set it up, you know, properly with all the accounts, that's the, you know, like that will get you the most benefit from your business. That's the real purpose of opening the accounts. It's to give you the maximum benefit from your business. So once we explain that to people and really show that to them, we have had zero people who have come on board with us ever like say, well, I don't want to open all the accounts. That guy who was in 2019 to 2020 at first was like, I don't want to open these accounts. Now he has like 12 bank accounts you know, like between his two entities. And he's like, I love it. it. It gives me a clear snapshot. Me of the owner, I know where my profit is, my true cash profit, not what someone tells me on a piece of paper, like a PL or balance sheet, you know, like where I am. I have it truly right there. But if I had to say one thing, open a profit account, transfer 1%. Now, as far as other percentages or the other accounts there, if you read the profit first book, or if you go on, if you go on, I believe the website too, they have what they are called target allocation percentages for each bucket. Meaning like if you're at this level, then you should be moving this much into the profit account, like 5% or 10% or whatnot. And, you know, and that's the target to shoot for. So he gives target allocation percentages 
And honestly, that was from a conglomeration of like studying a thousand businesses. So when I am writing the book for like profit first for real estate investing, those taps are pretty similar for like a flipping and a wholesaling company of where you should transfer those percentages into those different accounts. So I would just say, do some research on that because it depends on the size business you are. And those are targets. Those aren't necessarily what you should do today or what you can do because some people might go through this process and say, you know, I'm spending a million, but you know, I'm only making 900,000, you know, and in that case, you've got to do some work to be able to say, okay, got to cut some expenses, but we've also got to make sure we've during at least 1% into the profit account, you know, so where you can do, what can you do right now? That's where we come into these, some situations and they have like 95% is going to their operational expense account or like needs to come from there just to fund what they have currently. And that's where we do a rollout plan for, for like six quarters of like, okay, it might be at 95% now, which is okay. You're probably in the majority of real estate investors, but let's move that slowly to like where it should be like 60 or 50%, depending on the size of your business. So that's where we go in. And that's where like the percentages, I would get the percentages from the, the TAPS. They're called TAPS, the target allocation percentages, like from Mike's book or from the resources that he has online. And uh, that's where... That's what I would say. The one thing you could do right now is open one account and transfer 1% of their profit into it. Oh, nice. I was going to ask you, like, even do an example. If I have this much income, uh, you know, what account should, what percentage go into? And maybe that would be helpful. Uh, but it sounds like, I mean, often people just don't know where their money's going, I think. Right. right? You know, like I mentioned earlier, you just don't know. Uh, and you, you don't know till the end of the year that you're negative, uh, you know, in a big in a big way, potentially. Right. Yeah. Uh, or maybe you do have a big tax bill coming and you're not prepared for it uh, right. one way or the other. Uh, so, so no, that's, that's so interesting. And, and maybe we'll go to that website and, you know, and, and or the listener can and look up, look that up. Or if you can quickly go through that, I want to get to a few final questions, but you know, if somebody, you know, makes, you know, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars in their flipping business over the next, um, you know, couple months, you know, maybe you could say, okay, this account, this percentage, this account that, you know, is, is can you do that? Yeah. Off the top of my head, I know that first, that first level, because a lot of people are there is between $0 to 250,000 that you're making in what's called real revenue. And real revenue is a, is a term coined in the profit first book by Mike Michalowicz that it's in the real estate world, it's really simple. It's on a flipping or a signing or wholesale side, it's your property profit. So whatever your property profit is for the year, like what, you know, like you, how much did you make on your total uh, on all the properties that you sold on a rental business? It's your rental income minus your PITI to get your real revenue. So if you're between zero to 250,000, the suggested target allocation percentages for the profit account is 5%. For the owner's compensation is 50%. For the owner's tax is 15%. So there we have right there, just between those accounts, you've got what? You said tax. owner's tax? Yeah, the owner's tax is 15%. So between those three accounts, you've got 50% to owner's pay, 15 to the owner's tax, and then five to the, uh, to the profit account. So that's 70% right there. So the rest of it, what you have to live on is 30% inside of the operational expense like that's what should be going to operational expenses at that level because when you first start a lot of people think well i need to hire people and i need to hire this va and i need to do this that and the other thing and they don't think i need to make sure number one i'm taking care of number two i'm actually growing in a profitable manner and not just throwing money at what i think the the solution is to the problem and making sure okay if these are the targets that's only while you're like in the startup phase because then to phase two and beyond, like as you start to grow and scale, those percentages start going a lot differently because your operational expense will definitely increase. Your your owner's pay, like what you pay yourself, the percentage will decrease, but the what but what you pay yourself will increase because it's a percentage of what you're making in total. So that's where the percentages and why running it by percentages is so powerful. Because at the beginning, between those three owner's benefit accounts, you know, the owner's comp profit and the owner's tax, you're like taking 70% basically as your owner's benefit at the beginning, but you're making sure you're okay. You've got a business that supports you. And then as you can grow and scale from there and making sure, can you replace yourself, you know, like in some of those seats, do you have funds to be able to do that? But those are the percentages when you start out that he gives as the target allocation percentages. 
No, that's very helpful. At least help the listener think, start to think that way yep. and breaking these things down, knowing where your money's going. Uh, do you, what about the bookkeeping or just tracking these things? Any suggestions for that? Hey, you need, if you're in real estate, make sure they're real estate. They know real estate or you've got a CFO or something that knows real estate and that can guide people. So that's where I see a lot of people have issues. They just think I'm going to just give this to a bookkeeper and they'll handle everything. When the bookkeeper you hired might not even know what they're doing. They might not know real estate. And so then, honestly, like we ignored a lot of the gap side, which is like the PL, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. And honestly, when you first get started, you just need a baseline of knowing how to manage your money. And most entrepreneurs aren't going to be looking at those documents every single day or QuickBooks or something like that. They're going to say, look at my bank account. So that's why Profit First is also so powerful. But on the other side, you definitely need a great bookkeeper, you need a great financial system. And that's why as you grow and scale, you'll need to add people to your team, like a a great bookkeeper, like a great potentially like a CFO, you know, even a fractional CFO who knows what they're doing in real estate. That's the service we provide at Simple CFO. And then when you've got a great CPA, especially in real estate, if you've got rentals, making sure you're getting all the tax breaks that you you possibly can, especially if you're syndicating too, you know, like taking every single deduction that you can all the depreciation that's available to you, making sure you've got a good CPA on your team too. So that's where you re- you definitely need to know that side. And that's what's going to help you as you grow and scale, know where you are as a business and give you, give you those good KPIs, those key performance indicators of where you are on your financials and making sure, okay, are we truly profitable as a business? And then on the other side, if you've got profit first, you're actually going to see the profit piling up in your profit account. And it's not going to just be some nebulous number anymore. So that's where on the other side, yes, you need a great bookkeeper, potentially a CFO too, to help guide you and get you in that position. And then the CPA to make sure you're getting all the tax breaks you can. No doubt about it. I'll give a quick shout out to Ben at Lion Share Bookkeeping. He's our bookkeeper and advertises on the show and stuff. That's Ben at Lion Share Bookkeeping. Reach out to him. Let him know I sent you. Uh, but uh, David, you know, do you have any daily habits that you are disciplined about that have helped you achieve success? Daily habits. Well, I get up at about 5.30 every morning and a daily habit right now, I'm on a Zoom call from 6 to 7 a.m. on Monday through Friday that I do with Mike Michalowicz and other people. And like we just write or we work on a project at that time in the morning. So that's one thing that's really helped me uh, recently, just get very focused in the morning. Then from 7 to about about 8.30 or 9, I get on, I play with my daughter too. That's a daily habit that I have. Like that's Monday through Sunday, you know, like the, that's every single day of the week. As long as she gets up early enough, we play before work starts. And that's one of the things that's helped me stay grounded as an entrepreneur and like show her that love and support. And, and then also I, you know, I, I'm a Christian, so I read my Bible and pray every morning too. And so there's been a lot of daily habits that I have that have been given and passed down to me by a lot of good people. So I have a lot of good habits from seeing that from a lot of good people in my life. Then I have a daily huddle every day from 9 to 9.15 with my team to get on the same page, to get on the right page, make sure there's no issues or anything that we need to go over. We go over clients in that meeting too, just to get on, making sure everyone's taken care of. So there's some of the daily habits that help me get to you know, the next stage and to keep us on track to make sure I'm always the leader who I need to be for my, for my people. Mm, Thank you for sharing that. Uh, That morning routine is so crucial. Uh, uh, So uh, what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Ooh, uh, well, definitely. I would say being, (laughs) having God as the foundation, like before my, before every single daily huddle with the team, I pray for five minutes, you know, like through any specific request that they need, just making sure as a Christian, that's what I base the, my faith on and the rock and my foundation. So I feel like as long as I'm in tune with, with God, I'm, I should be in tune with everything else. So I feel like that's been the center of what's really helped. And then also those daily huddles too. That's been another big thing, making sure then that the people are all on the same page and making sure we're rowing in the same direction every day. How do you like to give back? How do I like to give back? Right now, we have a specific giving account because of Profit First, there's a specific bank account for missions and giving. Right now, we're supporting four missionary teams, and we're supporting one girl who's going to college. This morning, just bought some things for back uh, food for uh, backpacks for children. 
And that was someone that one of our CFOs brought to us as something like that. There was another missionary that reached out with their support. So like we are, we're always looking for ways to give back. And then honestly, one of the biggest ways we give back to is with our clients, just helping them get to that profitability stage so they can give back or do what they wanted to do too. So those are some tangible things we're doing right now. Nice. Well, David, I'm grateful to have met you and had you on the show. I just appreciate you sharing even how you give back and just your faith. And uh, I can appreciate that personally. Uh, and, and but walking through this profit first model, I think it's so interesting. Like I said, I've just started that book uh, as well. Uh, and so it's neat, I think, for the listeners to start to think that way as uh, also, you know, where's your money going? You need to know. Uh, if you don't, you need to know. And hopefully you'll, you'll take some of David's advice uh, and maybe reach out to him as well so he can help you set these things up. Uh, but so David, how can they do that? How can they get in touch with you and learn more about you? Sure. SimpleCFOSolutions.com is our website address. And there we have the application, you know, see if we're the best fit for you. We do everything from profit first implementation, bookkeeping, all the different types of things to make sure you're financially successful. Then also we have ProfitFirstREI.com for when the book launches. Like I want to make sure that even if, you, if we're not the right fit, for what you need in your business that we get the information out there. So that'll have the launch won't be until later this year for the book, but that's where you can see, uh, you know, like the updates on the book. We have a free podcast there too, that just gives free information on like making sure you have, you know, the profit first mentality and other people who've implemented it too. So that way you have encouragement that there are other investors that have gone through this process and have seen the benefits from it too. So I'd say simplecfosolutions.com if you want to work with us, profitfirstrei.com if you want education on Profit First. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.